katoa, uh, inga iwi, inga mana, inga reo, inga hoa fa, e kui ma, e koroma, ro ranga tera ma, no re ra tena koto, tena koto, tena tato kato. Good afternoon, everyone, and I have acknowledged and um, uh, greeted you in the original language of the people of New Zealand Māori. Uh, and I've done that out of respect to our original people and out of respect to Singapore, in particular as our hosts, uh, and to you all visitors from around the world. I want to, for a start, acknowledge Medellin and uh, our friends Fiko uh, and uh, our, the Mayor who has supported him all the way through uh, this extraordinary story, uh, both mayors present here today. Uh, Melin, it's wonderful to see your success and we support you. My friends from Sydney, Toronto and Vienna, all of us uh, together as uh, passionate leaders of cities uh, that are progressive within uh, this world. And to Singapore, wonderful to be here again, uh, to be with you, to the Chair, Mr Pillay, to the team that interrogated us so strongly. Uh, it was fabulous to host you uh, in our beautiful city, uh, and it's wonderful to see uh, you again. It's given us a chance to pause and reflect on 20 years of extraordinary change uh, in our city. Uh, and so we look forward to continuing the engagement uh, with Singapore and the World City Summit Prize. Uh, we have three key projects that we want to reflect back to you uh, on this occasion that form the basis of our nomination. The first starts with the people. Uh, in a Māori proverb, e aha te mea nui o te ao, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. What is the most important thing? It is the people, it is the people, it is the people. It is this philosophy that stands behind pretty much everything we do in our city. Whether you're Māori, Korean, Japanese, Samoan, Indian, Chinese, Singaporean, or even Australian. Uh, Auckland is about you, your culture, and giving you the opportunity to participate. Our story, though, is one of colonialism and confronting and dealing with the hangovers of colonialism. It's a story of embracing the diversity brought by constant immigration from around this world. Our human history started with the first Māori settlers coming out of the South Pacific in the 11th century. They named our city Tamaki Makaro, or a place desired by many. European settlement came in the 18th and 19th centuries, causing massive displacement of our first peoples. Many lost their lands. By the 1890s, the city has a cosmopolitan flavour with many new inhabitants from Europe, China and India. 13%. By the mid 20th century, we had large migration from rural areas into Auckland and internationally from significant migration around the Pacific Islands. All of this has resulted in a super diverse city today. We have 220 ethnic groups that make up our very diverse population. We are more diverse than London or Melbourne. 39% of our residents are born overseas. We are the largest Polynesian city in the world. Uh, but from that, uh, our fractured governance did not provide any real opportunities to fix some of these challenges inherited from our past. And recently, though, we have made a concerted effort to embrace he tangata, the people, and particularly the original people of our land. We integrated Māori engagement into everything we do and recognise the special place that Māori has as the original people of the land, and this is the reason why I greeted you in Māori today. To establish a stronger position of Māori in our city, we established the Independent Māori Statutory Board, which ensures in the Auckland Council we take clear account of the views of Māori, and that body has statutory legal power. To ensure the inclusion of our Pacific and other peoples, we give the voices of those people, uh, voices that are not normally heard, an opportunity through a number of advisory boards that have been established for Pacifica people, ethnic people, 
people with disabilities, young people, the rainbow community, and older people. Inclusion is at the heart of these strategic boards. We make sure, though, that we celebrate the diversity of Auckland. It helps build inclusivity and understanding across all of those cultures. It also means we have a lot of fun together. We support a large number of cultural festivals each year to include and embrace the fun part of our diversity. The Auckland Lantern Festival to celebrate Chinese New Year, Pacifica Festival to celebrate our Pacific cultures, Pride Festival to encourage and support those of gay persuasion, the Diwali Festival celebrating traditional and cult, uh, Indian culture, and Matariki in the middle of the year to celebrate the Māori community. So culturally, our city is developing leaps and bounds, but it requires a conscious decision and action to really embrace it. Our second demonstration project is the Auckland Plan. Six years ago, we went through significant government reforms. Our eight former councils were amalgamated into one super city, the largest in Australasia. The shake-up was in response to decades of fragmentation, competing governance structures, uh, infrastructure deficits, poor transport, and urban design. We uh, had no agreed vision or long-term planning strategy for the future. We couldn't decide on infrastructure investment. So, as the first super city mayor, I set a single vision for a start, to create the world's most livable city. And for that, you need a plan. We developed the first single comprehensive strategy for Auckland, the Auckland Plan, very imaginative name. Through the plan, we agreed with Aucklanders how and when we would fix Auckland transport problems, reduce housing shortages, give children and young people a better start in life, create more jobs and protect the environment. To put the plan in place, we identified transformative points, and one in particular was after 94 years of arguing about whether we would do metro rail in Auckland, we finally agreed and have started the process of building a rail tunnel for our city, doubling the number of people who would be using our train network. We have also started the process and will conclude in a month of putting one set of rules together to determine how we build uh, our city called the Unitary Plan. The Auckland Plan also addresses cross-agency challenges and particularly in our areas of greatest challenge. In the South, which is the most multicultural area, we work closely with government, non-government organisations and communities on key issues such as education and housing. Engagement and consultation is a key le uh, lesson from this project. We consulted with over 15,000 Aucklanders from right across the broad spectrum to ensure that the mandate was in place for this plan and vision to continue. It took us two and a half years to finalise this great Auckland plan and unitary plan. The third demonstration project has become a design-led city. We are transforming Auckland from a, uh, from a sprawling homage to the motor car to a quality, compact city fit for people. We want this design-led approach to be a draw card for Auckland internationally based on best practice. We're also conscious that we are bound by budgets. We can't afford a Guggenheim Museum or at this stage the Cindy Opera House. Uh, but we are focused on, as we call it, urban acupuncture, projects that we can achieve but bring about urban transformation. One or two projects to show you, the Auckland Art Gallery, a beautiful building, a juxtaposition of the old and the new, won the World uh, Building of the City uh, Award in 2013 with the World Architectural Festival. Uh, in Wynyard Quarter, the beautiful city waterfront, we are taking our community back to our waterfront. Previously warehouses, car parks and fish markets, now a walkable, livable, shoppable, drink coffeeable place. Uh, and then in terms of the inner city area, uh, we are undergoing a revolution with a network of streets where people are the king. For example, the transformation of Fort Street. Uh, into a shared space. Not only are these good city designs, but it's a huge boon for local businesses. 
Soon after, hospitality spend in the immediate Fort Street area increased by 440%. Uh, and our iconic light path, we decided to transform a former motorway ramp into a walking cycleway, and then we painted it pink. You can see this light path from the moon. It is stunning. And for iconic and future projects, we're looking to connect across our harbour bridge a walk and cycleway that we call Sky Path. So our city, through great urban design, through connecting and embracing our people, and strong commitment to 30-year long-term plan and a very clear vision, is going through a stage of extraordinary transformation uh, and change. It's humbling to stand on this stage with our city colleagues, my fellow mayors, our people who are involved in local government, and support the change for growth, for progress uh, within the world. And we will continue to be a part of that global discussion, the global debate and exchange of ideas through this program uh, and through our continued commitment to the Lee Kuan Yew Prize ceremony and the uh, summit itself. So I want to conclude very, very quickly, because I know I've got 1.18 minutes left, in a way that is appropriate to recognise you all. There has not been enough music in the summit so far. So I'm going to conclude in the way in which all Kiwis conclude their speeches have been raised in a primarily Māori community. We conclude with a waiata or a song of respect to you all, and particularly Medellin, you beauties. This is a song called Pokarikariana, uh, and it is a, a popular song in New Zealand and is a song of love and respect to those who are our hosts. So, Pokarikariana. I've got the singing choir of Auckland <laughs> with me to entertain you. Why are we here? <laughs> and if all else fails, Larry, you can join us. Pokarikariana, now I and a big welcome and acknowledgement to Wellington and Christchurch, Leanne and Celia. <laughs>